YouTube, it's Faye with Danny. <laughs> and for today's video, we're going to talk about crankshaft and play. That's right. I uh, had some questions from you guys in comments of some of my other YouTube videos, specifically requesting how do I set up a dial indicator, Faye? So I'm going to do a little series on different ways to set up a dial indicator. And for today, we're going to be doing it on this block and measuring crankshaft and play. And here are the tools that you're going to need to do this job. You're going to need a dial indicator and a base. Now here are two different base dials that I show in this video. And this is my dial indicator that I brought over to Davy's shop. Not that he doesn't have his own collection, but as a machinist, his dial indicators are way more precise than anything that we will be needing here on the automotive repair side of things. You will also need two large screwdrivers and um, a sledgehammer. All right, uh, now let's get into it. Hey, what is thrust anyway? All engines are gonna have a thrust to keep the crank from moving back and forth. Here, Danny is pointing out the location of the thrust bearing on this 1970 Chrysler 340. You can see the difference between the regular main bearing, which is contained entirely within the main cap, and this thrust bearing, which has these shoulders that wrap around the outside of the thrust main cap. This thrust bearing is special because unlike a regular bearing, it is specifically designed to handle axial loads. So axial, think axis. These are the forces parallel to the axis of rotation. You want to find something on either side that's flat. I really love this. Isn't um, that cool? This is really cool. <laughs> well, yeah, because not all engine blocks anymore are magnetic. I was going to say, because you got aluminum blocks. <laughs> got a lot not of everything. aluminum blocks and in Toyota. Here, sure. like I said, you could literally clamp yep. right there and you're done. Exactly. And this might even be the easiest thing. That's kind of neat because you can move it around anywhere. You don't have to, the adjustment part is super simple. Exactly. And then when, you, when you're done, you just loosen, you know, I mean, it's, it's really cool. <laughs> So this is kind of the definitely the, the Cadillac of, of <laughs> well, but, and on my new Supra, I was trying to do like brake rotor run out, and all my suspension components are aluminum. Yeah, I if, needed if that. You, if you can't find something to put to put that on, and a lot of times I used to have to I have a plate with a bunch of holes in it. Yes. And I have to bolt that to an aluminum block or aluminum cylinder head. Right. Which is exactly what I had done when I was degreeing my cams. For the dial indicator that I had for TDC, I placed my magnetic base on a flat piece of steel. And for the cams, I had to fabricate my own holding brackets that bolted down to the threaded holes for the valve covers and held my dial indicators at a very specific angle. In so many cases, you're going to find that the actual process of setting up the dial indicator on a strong, solid base will be the most challenging element of taking a measurement. But thankfully, in this case, crankshaft end play on this cast iron block is a breeze for setup, which is why it's the perfect example to use today. So this is my dial indicator that I brought, and this is one that I use mostly for brake rotor run out. Choosing the right dial indicator for your application can also be challenging. You wanna be sure that it's properly indexed for what you will be measuring. Now, the one that I chose for automotive use is a zero to one inch range with one thousandth of an inch graduations and a dial reading of one to 100. So super straightforward and easy to read. Also, I will note here that Starrett is not cheap. This was almost $200, but super high quality. You buy it for life and it's made in America. Actually, it's made in Massachusetts, just like me. For the thrust, perfect. We're dealing <laughs> in thousands, four to eight. This will do four to eight. Yep. They're zero. Uh -huh. So we're going to go to four, four little lines, four thousands yep. to eight thousands. Yeah. So there's real easy. To, you can't, you Oh, know. that's a beautiful sweep. Yes. And for doing brake rotor run out, uh, a crank thrust, um, even if you're going to degree a cam, um, sometimes if you get too into the tents, you get real frustrated. The wind blows and you're three tents off. <laughs> and you just, you'll sit there and you'll, yeah, four to eight, there's zero to ten. Yep. So each line is 1,000. Yeah. Super simple. You don't have to go to college to learn how to do this. This is super simple. I'm going to get the thrust setting tool. Oh my God. That is. It is in the manual for setting the thrust. No way. No, but it, it's <laughs> gonna be. Because Manuel did it this way. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say what So why is it important to set the thrust before we take our measurement? Well, we want to be sure that our thrust main cap is installed perfectly onto the block. You can install just this thrust bearing cap. Yes, and most of the time it's not done right. Most, Most of, the of the time, no one knows who's, you don't learn this in school. As far as side to side movement goes, there's a flat machined surface on the cap called a register, and that locks the cap into place. Now, as long as you have the correct set of matching caps for the block, you won't have any issues with side to side play. But what is preventing you from installing the cap incorrectly on the axial plane? Could you, in theory, install it a little too far forward or a little too far back? It can actually wipe all the oil off and you burn up <gasps> your crankshaft. Oh no. Because the top and the bottom 
are not aligned. Well, that sounds lousy. Guess we'd better learn how to install this extremely important cap properly. We want to take the dial indicator off when we set the thrust. Okay, dial indicator's off. Off when we set the thrust. We're going to get the main cap. Make sure that I'm correct. Tangs to tangs. We don't want tangs away from tangs. We're going to go all the way down and then we're going to loosen it. All the way down and then loosen it. Loosen the it. The tiniest little bit. Yes. Then our oh my precision God. tool. We've been doing this since I was a kid. Okay. And you're basically going to go. We have now set the thrust. So we've that set the thrust. That is how you set the thrust? Yes. What you do is you're hammering the crank all the way up this way. What right. it's doing is it's aligning your top cap. The block ain't gonna go nowhere. It's there, but your cap could be not aligned correctly. So by hitting it all the way back, it makes the thrust on the crankshaft hit the thrust on both bearings. Once you go back and forth, it aligned it. Now, now we torque this. Like I say, if it makes you feel better, put a piece of aluminum on there, put a piece of wood on there. We can check the crank here. I've never damaged the crank, you know, by doing that. <laughs> We're not getting there and getting medieval with it. Right. Now, before we begin our measurements, it would be good to know the specification for the crankshaft end play for the engine that we are working on. And Danny says that in general, four to eight. Four so to eight. a minimum of four, a maximum of eight. Is acceptable for most engines. Well, here are some Toyota specific examples. The new Tundra has a spec of three to 11 thousandths, while my older Supra has a spec of two to almost 10 thousandths of an inch. I was definitely crushing the cool tool game today, it seems, because Danny also loved my magnetic base. I will link all of these in the description of this video in case you want them to. And this is pretty cool. The old fashioned way, it had a bunch of nuts. You spent an hour to get it set up. Oh, the slides. Yes. Yeah, no, I yes. love this one. It's no, got it's, these two uh, little articulating elbows. They're almost like little joints, a little ball ball socket joints there. Yes, they are. And you see how easy it is to move it around and get so it to almost get, anywhere you need it to be. So we're going to get out there so we can see it. Yeah. There. Put it up against the crankshaft. And really, it's tightened this up right here. Yeah. And it's it. Yeah. It tightens up all the different joints by that one that one thing there. Yep. And then this one right here the, the, yes. adjusts the way that the head is sitting. Oh, you actually have a... Oh, look at that. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Oh, this is, <laughs> okay, so this is the Cadillac. Uh, oh, of I don't know about yeah, that. Mine doesn't have this one. Oh. Mine, you just have to uh, tap it. <laughs> So we're not tapping here. We're look, we're look at that. Oh my, okay. So I see something now. It's real cool. Okay. Uh oh, Danny wants one. I'll yeah, link it in my uh -oh. Amazon storefront, okay? <laughs> oh, that is sweetness. That is all kinds of sweet. Okay. Actually, let me get on the back here so the people can see what you're what you're adjusting there. Yeah. So, so that, that right. So look, look, yeah. So when, when we want to go right to zero, because we want to be right at zero, look how, I mean, that's look like Cadillac. I'm not used to this. Okay. So very cool. Yeah, that is very cool. Like I said before, I'd be tapping it. I'd yes. be tapping it. Or you have this ring out here. So yeah. I, I use the rings. What I do, I turn this ring. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's uh, pretty cool. <laughs> it's, it's real cool. Okay. Do we need to install all of the caps in order to check the thrust? No, you don't. Because the caps do not affect the thrust at all. You just check the thrust to see what I got before I send everything out to the machine, like we have right here. Yep. You do not need all the caps. All you need is the thrust. We're going to need two screwdrivers. Let me go get two screwdrivers because we're going to want to move the crank one way and the other way. Exactly. And here, you can probably do it. When you have all the mains on, yep. you're going to need the screwdrivers. Exactly. Because you're going to stick one in the butt. Right now, actually, without looking at You could move it with just the... Oh, yeah. yeah so. so we don't even need the screwdrivers because we don't have any make caps on it. Okay. Oh, so, I see it already. Okay, very exciting. Okay, very and exciting. you see how it changed? You see yes. how it was at zero? Yep. And now it's not? Exactly. Because yep. it wasn't set against it one side of the thrust. Right, right. So you've got to push it all the way one way. One way. First. And, and then and zero. And that's it. your zero. There we are. Look at that. Love it. Okay, now let's see what our thrust is. Eight thousandths. What? It is within spec. It is within spec. Okay. Now, hopefully it's an automatic. Hopefully it's automatic. It's a standard because it's a Dodge. It's, oh. a, it's a 340. They did make 340s in automatics, but this is a standard. But here's the deal. I'm checking the thrust here with the used bearing. With the used, that's right. Yes. Yep. And it looks like somebody did a little something because this one was built not too long ago. 
So the, the crank was cut 1010 and it has a, a set of bearings in it, but I noticed um, Yeah, they e look even in it. Yes, they looked a little one of them. We looked even look at how woo. Ooh. Uh, oh Oh, oh my god. It was already getting into the copper and it scratched the crank up So the cranks gonna have to be more than likely cut again, but oh my god really? When it gets a brand new set of bearings, we're gonna be tighter than eight. Yes, exactly. Because this is with a set of used that's bearings. That's worn. Okay. Yes. So hopefully with a new set of bearings, it's gonna be within specification. Oh, yes. And we can I, just I'm build here, it and send it, no like problem. Like here, we, we know this is okay. Now, what if we had just torqued the thrust main cap down without setting the thrust first? Also, if it's out of alignment, what do we have here? Eight? We can torque this down and I can make it have six. Right. Yeah, because the block can be over here and the cap can be over here. Exactly. I can make it have 4,000. Right. If it moves back and forth on any of these, it doesn't really matter. As long as the bolts go in and the register lines up. Right, because that doesn't, that's, that's not affecting any... Anything. Well, shoot! That was so helpful and so informative. And I learned something too in making this video. So I hope, I sincerely hope that you thoroughly enjoyed this video. And now get out there and check your crankshaft and play people. And let me know, what do you get in the comments below? And do you have any other questions for Danny? Maybe he will do a follow-up. Maybe we will do a follow-up. We shall see. Well, we will see you in our next video. Bye.